Hello and welcome to D&D with High School Students, Season 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I am at the table with the cast. We will do one round of quick speed introductions. Who are you and who are you playing? Starting to my left with Harris. Hi, my name is uh, Harris. I'm playing Florian Meadow, who is a satyr monk. I'm Josh. I'm playing Occam, a totem barbarian Leonid. And across the table to <coughs> Ellen. Hi, I'm Elle. I'm playing Winifred Bird. She's the satyr grape cleric. And then, Kat. Hello, I'm Kat. I'm playing <laughs> oh. Mark Othello, a shifter warlock. OK, so guys, you climbed to the top of the mountain. And I don't mean that metaphorically. In a big, big mountain range, after days of travel, you, you made your way past many obstacles and, and dangerous foes. You made it to the top of the mountain, and you saw a strange thing. It was flattened, a plateau that stretched for a distance. But someone in this group has almost uh, limitless vision and was able to see across the plateau, all the way across, was a, a little tower, just a little tower, like a guard tower, a small, you know, meager three-story watchtower. Um, you made your way there, you encountered someone, a man with lustrous blonde hair and tan skin and uh, noble clothing and robes. He invited you into his tower. He, he entreated you and, and you guys were welcomed in. And you noticed, by the way, when you went in the tower, that it was clearly some form of magic because it was way bigger inside than it was outside. And you talked about a lot of different things. Now, I know it's been a while, so I'll tell you that your conversation concluded uh, with the man explaining his relationship to Sibylla and that she is, in fact, a silver dragon. And he is, in fact, a gold dragon. They, they are associates. Yes. Uh, <laughs> he welcomed you to his home. He told you to, you know, feel free to go up and, and grab one of the many rooms in the tower and, and to rest and sleep, and that in the morning you would, you would gather once more. And he walked out of the room. You guys were in that parlor where he had been hosting you. You saw this epic painting. Of a, of a mountain, mountainous region at night with a huge ball of flame in the distance, like the moon, but a ball of flame. Um, and then two dragons, a gold and silver dragon flying into the sky. And that, that's where we wrapped up. So, you go, go, go to get a long rest, presumably? Yeah, I thought we'd end with yeah. a long rest. Did we or no? No, we ended with the painting. Yeah, so you go upstairs and you, you each find a very comfortable room. And unlike Sibylla's like, Treehouse. This is. These are like really. They're like finely decorated rooms with lush furniture and and you know cozy upholstered furniture and decorations and very luxurious. Like the kind of thing you'd find in like the the home of a noble or maybe even some kind of regent. So everybody sleeps. Before I go to sleep, yes. <laughs> I want to offer a prayer. Um, Occam is definitely still not sure what exactly went down in the last, I'd say, probably 48, 72 hours. Mm. Uh, definitely 24 hours. He's going to offer prayer to Ganog pretty much along the lines of, uh, my name is Occam. I don't know how to thank you. I don't know what you are, but I owe a significant debt to you. How can I repay that? Mm. Mm. Oh, oh. That's a twelve. It's twelve. It's nighttime. You know that, right? <laughs> okay. You you continue like this. Sword yeah, you continue this meditation. You're holding the sword. And you were just tired. You're exhausted. I mean, which is very realistic because you've traveled through harsh climate and mountains for days. You you ever kind of fall asleep for a moment, like, you know, when you're like not off and you're like, huh. You nod off for the briefest moment, but in that brief moment you had a short dream. And in that dream, you saw through your own eyes this room that you're in right now. 
but you see daylight coming through the window. And you see yourself through your own eyes go over to the window and part the curtains. And your super eyes go like, and they super zoom in. And you see a hand crawling up over, like an old humanoid looking hand crawling up over, like kind of where you guys came up and pulled yourselves up. And then psh, you wake up. Is it day? No, it's nighttime. But you just had this like momentary flash. Can I run over the window? Is anything outside? You run over to the window. Open the curtains. Okay. You have dark vision. Yep. And super sight. Yep. Uh, you you like scan the whole. I mean, there's like some moonlight. You know what I mean? Um, you don't see anything. Nothing. I mean, there aren't even like animals up here. Like it is barren rock. Like nothing should be able to live up here. You hear the like howling of the wind and stuff. Um, I go to sleep. Okay. Anybody else do anything prior to going to sleep? I don't, I don't think, think so. so. Okay. All right. Everybody roll a d6. And in this case, you want to roll low. This is to determine who is waking up first. I trust this, yeah. It's a one, baby. Winifred Birch, you wake up feeling rested. And had. You are fully healed. You are, this is the best sleep you've had in months. You feel rejuvenated. Um, you feel great. You see the sun like coming up. You can you can kind of see it just at the edge of the of the horizon line, kind of at the edge of the plateau. It's quiet in the tower, quiet outside. What would you like to do? Shit, I forgot this guy's name. What did he call? Oh, the the he didn't tell you his Oracle. name. The Oracle. Oh, he didn't tell us his name. Um, how early is it? Is it like morning? It is. Oh yeah, it's about. You estimate like dawn, right? Like maybe, well, okay. but would you see the sun if you were that high in the mountains, cresting over? It's six in the morning. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go find the oracle. Okay. You don whatever clothing you decide to don, you go downstairs, you get to the main level, and you smell delicious food, like cooking is happening. And down the hall, you hear the sounds of like plates and you know it, things being stirred. And I'm gonna walk into the kitchen. I'm assuming you you see him. He is in a regal robe, not the same one as he wore yesterday. He's wearing like furry slippers that look very comfortable, <laughs> and he is working like a six burner stove and has like all this food cooking. Uh, you see like bowls of fruit like on the counter next to him. Uh, you see like platters that are like ready to be set up. Mm -hmm. um, and and he doesn't seem to notice you. You kind of like peek in the kitchen. You see him like working. He's doing some eggs and some breakfast meats. And he's there? got like a stew of vegetables going on. There an occasion? Oh, Winifred Birch. That's my full name, yep. <laughs> I walk into the kitchen. Yes, well, we will have a most superb breakfast, as it has been far too long since I have had guests here. He's continuing oh, right. to cook and prepare things. He's like, uh, by all means, are you uh, one who prefers a tea? He's like, allow sure. me. Yeah, yeah. You Tea's see, he good. goes over to the kettle, and it's it like is clearly just been put on recently, mm -hmm. um, and it starts to kind of whistle, and he grabs it and he pours. Uh, a cup and you see like the tea leaves in there and he pours it in and you notice like just steam erupting from this hot metal thing that he's holding with his bare hands and then he pours the tea in and he hands you a cup he's like perhaps you would enjoy seeing the rising sun i have a sitting room just across yeah, the hall from the dining uh, chamber yeah sure can i talk to you for a second actually about some of things? course Allow me to put the ham to the side so it doesn't burn. <laughs> and he goes over and kind of so scoops goofy. the ham up, flips it over, like he lowers the heat, you know, kind of moves the wood around inside of, of the oven. And he's like, yes, this should be quite good, quite good. And he so turns to you. Sorry. How can I help you? Uh, well, two things. Pause. Who had the next lowest roll? I had a four. Five. Four? Four? Four. Five. Got it. You have plenty of time. Go ahead. Two things. Um, 
So I have weird magic that I don't understand that you might, and I don't think I want this. And I place the orb down, like on the counter. <laughs> that was kill. Oh. Winifred Birch was he, found the next morning. <laughs> he falls back. Oh, he doesn't what? fall. Is everyone right? doing that? He doesn't fall, uh -huh. but he jumps back three feet and he goes, No, what? How? Why is that here? I got it in a box. I don't know. I didn't want a ring because everyone else got a ring and there was the funny orb. But I'm starting to feel like it's not a good thing for me to have, you know? It is not a good thing, Winifred Birch. <laughs> I assume that. By, by what means did you obtain this? In a box. What kind of box? Oh, the Crown Bishop gave it to us. What was the box made of? What? I think? No, 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 no. What was the box made of? Can I like... How long have you been here? He begins wandering. He leaves What's, the kitchen. What, what do you mean, how long have I been here? Like, eight hours? Ten? What do you mean? You see, he goes... <clears throat> You see he goes to the front, he goes down the hallway. Do you follow him? Yeah, I follow he, he's him. He's in a hurry. He goes to the front door. He opens up the front door and he looks out. What? And he closes the door. And he says, uh, I, I must, we must secure it. Uh, yeah, that's what Wait here. And you see he goes the other direction. I go to the kitchen and I get some toast. <laughs> and I look at the orb while eating my toast. Okay, the orb just looks normal. I flip off the orb. Do you, you want to make an arcana check? Sure. <laughs> to flip off the orb. Natural or, 20. Natural yeah. 20. All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you something that you yeah. reasonably at this point would have enough experience. Because you even mentioned, why does everybody react like this? Yeah, sure. In point of fact, as you were thinking about this problematic uh, sphere, you... It occurs to you that you're like, why, why does it? Like, what does it do? Mm -hmm. What do you know that it does? Necromancy. Okay. That's certainly one thing, right? Mm -hmm. Have you ever actually tried to identify or use any sort of spell to determine what this is? Well, I know what it is. It's the tear of a god, kind of. Have, do you have the spell detect magic? I do actually. I'll cast it with the natural funny arcana check. You don't detect that this is magical. Oh. Weird. Okay. Um. Huh. However, what's the range on detect magic? About ten feet. Uh, ten feet. It's a, let me check. Half of this kitchen is magic. Like that's, oh, most that's of the pots and pans yeah. are all like oh. imbued with minor enchantments. Um. You wouldn't be carrying the large it's 30 feet silver around dragon scale shield with you, would you? No, that's it. It is 30 room. feet around you. It gets right. blocked by one foot of stone, though. Suffice it to say, mm -hmm. it's weird to you that this thing that clearly wields some power does not detect as magic. You know when you like shake a, like, a, an electronic? Yes. <laughs> when he does that to try okay. to make it magic. You see it start to become a little more smoky inside and swirl. Does magic show up when I do that? No. No? Well, all right. I don't like you. I don't know what you're doing. Make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, shit. That is a unnatural 20. Um, it has no comment. You know, like, you made Tulip. That was cool. But everyone's kind of like not liking you. So I don't know about that. You also haven't talked to me at all, which I find offensive. This is a very one-sided relationship that you and I got going on, Mr. Orb. Miss mm, Orb. I'm not going to give you pronouns. You also <laughs> feel, um, you also feel as you're thinking about this, that there was some vision that you were, you had in regards to this thing when you when you tried to understand it more. A, a vision of a strange ball of flame far away on the horizon. 
and a vision of something flying, something very large flying towards you. Oh, right, the dragon. Mm -hmm. You're thinking about this, and you're not sure it was a dragon. You know it was winged, but it was very far away. Oh, right. What could it, like, a god? Do you like, are you like a, you know, like, like a dog whistle, but with like a god or a monster? What are you? <laughs> She's just looking at it. Oh no. You said what are you? <laughs> I, I wanna, yeah, that's what, that's what I said. That's an 83 year old right there. The smoke inside the orb swirls more actively, let's say. But not in any consistent pattern. Like it'll, it'll shift its smoky, swirling pattern repeatedly. That's not very helpful. All right. Lark Othello. Yes. You wake <clears throat> up. Cool. It's sunny. Cool. You can I'm going to go get sun. breakfast. I'm assuming I can still smell it or no? Yes. Okay. Yeah. As you clip clop out of your. Oh, actually, no, you're not a satyr. As you walk out of your room, <laughs> welcome to the Santa down the Club. stairs, you smell breakfast. Florian, you are awake. Uh, Florian does that thing in like cartoons where he's carried by the smell of the breakfast downstairs. <laughs> like, okay, he, uh, he floats over there. You you both in short order arrive to find. Um, not a dining table. This is like a serving, like a serving table in the kitchens. Uh, but you see a whole ridiculous amount of food, and you see Winifred sitting at that table, looking at the black orb, and like talking at it. Hey, Winnie, how's it going? Uh, you don't see your host. I show the oracle the orb. I thought we weren't going to do that. Well, I thought I should get rid of it. That's a good idea. Well, where is he now? I don't know. He ran off. Why? Okay. I, he said something, something, uh, I'm going to go this way. We got to contain it. I don't know what it is. I don't really know what he's fussing about, but I think it's bad. It may be related to a god or something. It's a little spooky. Are I you related to a god? I'd assume it's probably not uh. good. I don't know. If the big, powerful dragon is alarmed by it. I guess. I don't know. You don't know? I don't know what it is. I just didn't... You don't it. really need to know what it is to know that it's not good, so let's maybe not... All right. That's fine. ...until he comes back. I don't know if it's fine, Florian. I did make breakfast dance and... You know breakfast, the that giant monster that attacked us? We made it breakfast. Yeah. Yeah, that, and then to it, and then... Spider, yeah. Spider, yeah, something like that. I don't know. Mm. Well, I'm going to go to find orb. him. I'm gonna go find yeah, him. Yeah, I can talk to the orb. Okay. The, the wizard, the dragon. Um, yeah. At the very end of the hall, opposite mm -hmm. from the main entrance of the tower, you see a door. It is ajar. And you hear the sounds of somebody looking through stuff. You hear, like, <laughs> things being just tossed aside, and you kind of peek in. You see a room that is full of shelving, like built-in shelving, and he's going through, like pulling down crates, opening them up, tossing them aside, going around different things, and finally you see he, he arrives at this wooden crate and he pulls it down, rips the top open, which had nails in it, just does that with his bare hands, and looks inside and he says, ah, here. And he reaches in, and he pulls out six square metal plates. Thin, like metal plates, like as thin as this. Uh, he says, ah, at last. May I, you know what, you can make an arcana check because you. I would like to do that. You might recognize. 19, unless you consider that botch. Okay, the metal plates I my hand. are, are um, plain. They're like, there's no inscriptions on them. There's nothing. No marks, really. But the metal itself looks familiar. It is a dull gray. And as he's kind of like picking them up and tilting them, you almost see like a greenish tint on the, the dull gray of the metal. It looks familiar. A lot like... Occam's sword? Occam's sword. 
you see him take these. He turns, he sees you, and he says, Good morning, Lucka fellow. Excuse me. And he brushes past you and runs down the hall towards the kitchen. I'll follow him. Okay. <clears throat> you notice mm -hmm. as he comes in, he, he like turns the corner and stops and looks at the, the orb and... Do I need to like put it in the box? In a manner of speaking. You see he lays out the six tiles and like kind of lays them out, does these little like weird adjustments. Uh, this one, this one. And then you, you see he does like this and mage hands bring these metal plates up. And then he takes the other ones and he goes like this and the other plates come up. And then the last one he goes like this but he doesn't co seal it completely. He kind of leaves it up. And you basically see that he is mage-handed out of these six squares, a metal box. You put it in a cube. the fucking demon core right it's, here. <laughs> it's, not, it's not closed. It's not hinged. It's obviously like still open from so any not, crack. I'm not putting this in there. He's like, yes, please do. What is this, by the way? It will contain the orb. What? No, okay, keep it in the box. All right. The moment you set down, let let it go. Yeah. He goes like this. The lid slams, and then he goes, <laughs> like concentrates, and you see the metal pushing into itself, and it's literally vibrating, like at a super, like, subsonic almost level. Like you hear like, <laughs> and then it kind of clamps. Look at that nuclear bomb. And as you were looking at it, there are no seams. Like it is now become one solid metal cube. Hmm. Wow. And he goes. Oh. So for my second quest, actually third question now. What was that thing? Orb. A relic of a very nefarious what nature. What does it do? <laughs> Just tell me what it does. There are crystals which present affinities with specific elements. Okay. That is an affinity with the void. Oh, I already knew that. It is not in and of itself evil. It can be used to fuel wondrous magic, but it is extraordinarily volatile and dangerous, and most importantly, it is a conduit to beings that are of a supremely powerful nature. Which beings? That depends on when you are. That doesn't sound too <laughs> good. Just like, is the, are either of them Cinquerone or Tyke? Cinquerone could be a name to represent such an entity. Tyke perhaps would have been a name. Tyke would have been a name from long ago. Okay. Did you say when? Yes. Oh, you're not there. <laughs> <laughs> so, is it bad that I used it? In what way did you use it and how recently? Oh, about 10 hours ago. Not here. Well, on the mountain. But not on the plateau. How far down the mountain were you when you used no, it? No, we were on the plateau. No, we were In what way did was, you use it? It was right before we got to no, the plateau. No, because we were on the edge of the plateau and I wanted to bring Tulip with, but then we did... Do you know those ice spotters? Yes. I, so we, Occam killed one, but then we wanted a way up the mountain. We named it Tulip and we, I did something with the orb and it climbed up the mountain. And it was on the plateau with us. He like brushes his hair back. Oops. Smash cut. I wake up. You know up. that song? Yes, yeah, springtime. Yeah. I can't whistle it because I'm laughing. <laughs> you know the song. Yeah. Yeah. You, that, that you feel transcendent. You are so well rested. <laughs> like your muscles are relaxed. You're just like, oh. Like Occam gets you out just, of bed where yeah, he just like. You just like, wake up. You're like, <laughs> yeah, you peaceful. are awake, uh, fully healed, everything restored. You feel great. And then you sit up in bed and you see the light, the morning sun coming through the window. You know, you, you see the, the curtains. He's full of I whimsy. I grab my sword. 
You grab your sword. I approach the window. You approach the window. I will tear the curtains open with incredible gusto. You tear the curtains open with incredible gusto. <laughs> Do I see a it's hand? It's almost like in that weird vision that yeah. you saw. You extend your vision to the edge. Absolutely. You see a hand <laughs> pop up. It's an old, wrinkly oh, hand. Jump out no. the window. You see another hand <laughs> pop up. I think... I will jump out the window. Okay, I think, make an athletics check. I think simultaneously. <laughs> so I rage as I jump out. Sure. Oh, I, I've wonderful. been planning to do this. I think Florian, uh, he's going to go, all right, well, I'm going to go try to talk to this to my ring, and I'm going to walk out the front door into the howling wind. Oh, because it's wind. Yeah, because it's wind. All right. And I think simultaneously. Please tell me I you just, failed so 19. you can fall on Florian. Damn it. Oh, I rolled on that one, but all I right. managed, so. You, you're like, oh, you jump out the window, you superhero land, and literally, like, you open the door, and Occam just lands right next to you from above. Ah! Full sprint. What? He takes off. Okay! I run after him. <laughs> okay. Well, you guys are pretty evenly matched not with anymore. your stupid, broken I don't, movement. I, I didn't, You're not going to come dead on us? <laughs> I, he just started running. I don't know why he's are running. Are you able to use your super sight while you're running and raging? Yes. I believe so. It's. I just yeah. have a model okay. of vision. I'm following. So it's weird, right? Have you ever tried to just walk like a normal human while you're looking through binoculars? Mm -hmm. It's weird. No, so it's I can see clearly for a mile, which is like I can zoom in, but it's also like I can also just be normal. Okay, so you're running normally. Mm -hmm. Do you uh, occasionally like, mm -hmm. slow occasionally down to I a jog in. and look? Yeah. You see the the person pulling themselves up now has gotten their head and torso up. Hair? You can't see their face, but they have long, stringy, like white, silver, gray hair, and they. Do they have a goofy hat on? They crawl up, and basically fall. Do I see? It this? looks like a, a, a woman's body wearing very, kind of like, burlap sack sort of cheap, mishmashed clothing, and it seems Do I torn. Recognize this figure? The face looks up, and you see the eyes are like fluttering, her lips are blue, and, and her, her jaw is shivering. It's Sibella. Oh, no. No. And, no. and then, again, she, like, no, looks up cry. out in the direction of you guys. You're still, like, hundreds of yards away. She, like, looks out, and she's like, oh, and she falls back down. Like, at the edge. Ah! I'm gonna, like, uh... <clears throat> you guys continue running. Okay. Florian's How going. Does she fly? If she's a drag. Florian's going as fast as he possibly can. You, you guys get there. You run up. Uh, uh, make a medicine check. I, what's your medicine? No. <laughs> it's, I got a it's plus wisdom three. based. So. Yeah, yeah, I got a plus three. Plus one, I think. Oh, uh, that's a seven. Oh, no. You're like try she's dead. Yeah. She's dead. <laughs> <laughs> we both You're like, before. oh no, she's what dead. Uh, what do we do? Grab, how big is it? It's normal human? Yeah. Touch. You grab the body, start running. She's oh, like, she she's like, uh, 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 ouch. Uh, 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 <laughs> are you alive? You know, she, you see her eyes. You know when people are like half, like on the verge of unconsciousness? Her eyes are glazed over. She looks up and she says, uh, you. Oh, she and she's died. breathing. You see, no, she's not. Akam, she's. Akam, she, give, give me, she give, give me Sevilla, Akam. <laughs> uh, Astral arms grabbing Sevilla. Um, Florian uh, just guns it back for the tower. Smash cut back to the tower. You're in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. That thing is sealed in a box. Cool. Bacon. <laughs> he says, <laughs> "Yeah." <laughs> he's like, "Yes, enjoy yourself. It's not as though." Uh, he says, the, "The worry that I have is that thing being here." Why? It shouldn't be. It Where was. It was hidden away on purpose so that no one, particularly those with evil intent, could find it. It can be used, as I said, as a catalyst for powerful magic. Not necessarily good or evil, but could be used for evil. And those who know its properties could manipulate things in such a way that they could remove the barriers. Are there that many people on this continent? There are not that many. 
But do you understand what removing the barriers would mean? It means yeah. that the eleven could move about freely. Yeah, and then I know yes. that. Yeah. This thing, I am not sure how it came to be in your possession. Uh, the crown bishop. That doesn't make sense. The crown bishop should never have had it. The crown bishop is too close to the Leviathan. W wasn't the Leviathan breaking out and stuff? What yes. They broke the barrier with the yes. Leviathan with the orb. If only I were able to speak with Sibylla, she might know more. <laughs> Florian is actively running 220 feet per round at the, at <laughs> the tower. Florian very conveniently burst in with Sibylla. He's going moment. so fast. About 100 feet short of the tower, she, she tugs at you a little bit. She says, wait, stop. <laughs> Skins. Shh. I cannot see him in this form. OK. Uh, Please. What do, what, do, what do I do? She says, I must just set me down for a moment. Do you have any water? Uh, water skin? I Blanket? She, water skin. She, she, thank you. She wraps herself in the blanket. I assume you ran along. You're yeah. caught up. Okay. So you guys are about 100 feet away from the tower. She wait. wraps herself in the run, blanket. I'll probably be a little bit behind. I'm going to get a quick scan of this mountainside. Do I see anything? Hmm. Before you left the cliff? Yes. Make a perception check. That's bad. Ten. Don't you have advantage? Nope. No? Mm. So you, you go to the edge, you do a complete sweep. I mean, you could see pretty far down, other than the parts where there's like yeah. clouds, like fog. But you, you thoroughly scan like everything around from 180 degrees. You don't see any threats, any no ice spiders, nothing like that. Then I'll start running back once the okay. scan's done. Smash cut inside. Hmm. In this container, it is secure. Okay. But my fear is that those who would be attracted to its power could now come here. Oh. So where should we take it? <sighs> could you teleport it out of here? Back to like the the rest of the world, and then they couldn't never get here, and the Eleven could never get out, and then, uh, you know. He says, you, you speak wisdom, Winifred Birch. I try. Not by the measure of teleportation per se, but there is a possibility that it could open a portal, and it could be brought to somewhere else. I must ponder this. Bro has to ponder the orb. All right. Um. She, smash cut, is wrapped in a blanket, drinks half of the water skin. Do, do, do you <sighs> want me to, like, you see, like, the people? color kind of starting to come back to her a little bit. She says, I have no magic left. Uh. Coming here has drained me. She okay. says, you are all healthy, though, yes? Yeah, yeah. Uh, one second. Florian bursts into the tower, runs past everyone, grabs, like, four blankets and a bunch of pillows, you runs see back Where out. Where are you going? He's carrying I, all of them with the astral arms. I follow and him. <laughs> okay. While he's gone, I'm going to take the earth ring off and offer it to Sibylla. Would this help you? She says, uh... A fire ring, perhaps, for warth, warmth would be more helpful, but perhaps I can draw healing from the ground. <laughs> you are wise. I'll hand it over. She holds the ring in her hand, and she you see she's like concentrating with her ring in this hand, and she's got her hand on the, the rock, like the barren rock. You follow him. Mm -hmm. Where are you? Are you staying in the kitchen? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> I think if I see the oracle, I'm gonna like point my stick at him and go, you, stay there! <laughs> I'm gonna keep running. <laughs> you see that he is studying the box, and he, he's thinking. And he says, Lark Othello, would you assist me? 
Sure. In acquiring a few more important things from my study. Yes. He heads back down the hall. Um, you go into that massive room, the library, and he goes over kind of the opposite side of where he was sorting through stuff. And you see like stacks of books and then like a little object and then another stack of books and kind of like interspersed, almost like bookends kind of on the shelves are these little collectibles and things. Um, he says, can you grab that please? And he points to a peculiar looking thing. It kind of looks like a candelabra to you. It, it looks like it's made of brass, perhaps. Uh, copper, but you're something in that warm color tone. And you see that it's it has kind of a central sort of like metal cup. And then it has like four spokes that go out in each direction. And at the end of each of these like kind of curved spokes that kind of tip up are other cups, like four of them. Uh, and then you see he goes over to a book and he pulls the book down. He opens the book and you see that the book is hollowed out. And inside of the book is a small white gem. He closes the book, sets that down. He goes over to another part of the library, grabs another book off, opens it up, and you see a very bright blue gem. And he closes that book, sets it on the other one, goes over to another part of the library, grabs another book. Can I grab a random book like while he's doing this? Yes. <laughs> I open it. OK. Um, I'm expecting a crystal inside. You don't see a crystal inside, okay, I but you it see that it. same strange writing that you guys couldn't read before. Okay. He has assembled four books, each of which contain a hollowed out interior that has a different colored crystal. The last one has kind of a sort of fiery orangish, yellowish red that seems very vibrant and it's you see it's kind of like subtly flashing inside almost like a flicker. He grabs the four books that have the gems inside. He says, please bring the artifact. Sure. He, he walks down the hall back towards the kitchen and sets everything on that table. You go outside with him. Mm -hmm. You see him standing over um, a person. And as you get closer, you see that that person is Sibylla. She looks in kind of bad shape. Um, you see that she's like holding something in her hand and her hand, other hands on the ground. And you see she's like wrapped in a blanket. I give her like the rest of the blankets and pillows and like a pitcher of water. She says, I, what? I cannot channel this energy. Thank you for. Take it back. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not certain why I can't heal myself. Certainly the earth is an element which has always blessed me. Perhaps it is the protections that he has on this place. Do you want me to heal you? Hi, this is, where do I see you Would again? Would you please, dear? Yeah, I can. Uh, I'm casting Cure Wounds at fourth level. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's right. Yes. Can I make an insight check? Please do. Is this actually Sibylla? I'm using my calculator for this because I'm bad at math. Eight. Oh, yeah, can it I? looks like Sibylla. It sounds like Sibylla. But it's not acting like Sibylla. You do find it weird that a very powerful person can't do magic here. However, I'll let you follow that up with a hmm, Arcana check. Oh. The Can second I? worst oh. thing that you have. Okay. That's be the worst. Come on, hit it. That's bad. That is a three. Stop rolling terrible. You're like, why can't powerful forest lady do magic in the mountains? Hmm. What I was going to ask was, could I? She called me here. That's weird. Um, <laughs> could I roll inside for a whole totally different reason to see where she's hurt if there is an actual wound? But because uh, medicine would work. Sure. She doesn't. Medicine she would. She would, doesn't would, look. I mean, injured. her her clothing looks very ragged. Oh, that's not good. Um, uh, like as if maybe it was torn nice in the process yeah. of climbing a mountain. Unnatural twenty. Unnatural twenty would reveal that you don't see any visible wounds, like no scrapes, scratches, bruises. I'm gonna... She looks weak and sickly. Mm -hmm. The cure wounds fixes physical. You you. I I think she like pulls her hand away. Are you actually hurt? 
I don't know if this is the right spell. Um, wait. I am dying. Okay. Um. <laughs> I have left the forest, and therefore, why did you leave the forest? My power dwindles. Why did you leave the forest? I was wrong. About what? I should not have told you to come here with the dark gift that you possess. He put it in a box. He has put it into a box? Yeah, like He's a, seen it? Yeah, he saw it. I showed it to you at breakfast. There's like a box that looked no, like... No, he's going to die now. <laughs> five, five steps back. What she do you says, mean he's going to die now? please, don't do this. What? Don't do what? I will sacrifice myself so that he may live. What the hell are you talking about? Can we go wait, get, wait, hold, can we go get your dragon boyfriend or no? no? The closer he is to me, the more likely he will die. She says, please, you have known me. I have always guided you. Please just bring me the orb so that I can bring it away from him so that he does not suffer the same fate that I am certain to. I have my sword still, yeah? Yeah. Mr. L. You're kind of talking crazy. I, I don't would like to attack. <laughs> she says, it is evil. It is poison. I'm, I'm not, but it, no. He is pure here, but it will infest like a poison. It will fester, and this place it will be gone. It didn't do anything to me. Yeah. Reckless attack. What? <laughs> what? Go? <laughs> All right, Josh, bring it on. I guess I was, initiative's in I was order. Gonna Everybody do, roll initiative. I was going to do something Except first. for Kitty Cat, who's inside. Oh. Oh. I need new dice. I need new Michelle. dice. All right, I have a 23. What do you have? Ooh. Real fast. For yeah. initiative. First time Florian thing. Can I roll an insight check? Sure. This is a... Could I also roll one of those now that she's been... For the, sure. For the 18. first 21. time in his life, Florian goes, hmm. wait a minute. <laughs> 21. Okay, All right, right. 18 for Occam, 21 for... That was the insight I check. Oh. Uh, my initiative was 17. Okay, your insight tells you that something's not right. My my insight check was even higher. It was a 25. Yep. You know what, Sigula? Your instinct is that something's not right. Does my attack I don't weird. think I believe 19. you. Uh, he's already attacking. 19 so initiative. So the time for talking is okay. over. 19 initiative. Yeah. Is Winnie. And then what do you have? I didn't cast that fourth level uh, spell, 17. by the way. 17 initiative for Flohorian. Flohorian? <sighs> okay. Can I have your research? Does my attack go up before initiative starts or no? Well, Josh. I need that book. Oh. I'm pretty sure your attack goes off, but something has to happen, and I don't remember the order of operations. So I think it goes second. does, and then initiative goes to initiative count. So the first initiative. You're you're probably right. This is a bad time to have a lady. I am, uh, okay, great. go ahead and attack. All right, cool. Uh, two dice, two dice. Oh my god, that's. Terrible. Put those dice away. I did. These There's are new ones. Why do you always you roll bad in this campaign? This is a 10 to hit? You missed. Damn. Well, so I guess that doesn't happen. All right. Uh, can I take a second attack? Yeah, yeah, it's your round. All right. What dice am I using? Ooh. No, no, oh, no. no. Wait. That was the surprise round. Yes. <laughs> you get two attacks normally? Yeah. Okay. But you're not raged. You know that. Yeah. Okay. They're just not reckless. Oh, I just want to make oh, sure yeah. that you're going to make. Ooh. That'll be a 25. That's a hit. Okay. If you said that was a miss, I would have just walked How out of the studio. Damage? Is 12 magical slashing. Make a dexterity save. That's not Sibylla. I have <laughs> advantage on those. I can That's see. a nuclear bomb. Uh, can I see the effect that's causing this first? Duh. Sure. That is not how you spell Sibylla's name. Uh. What is this? Does it say seven. like the darkness or nope. something? <laughs> it says damage. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> that is not how you spell Sibylla's name. I thought there was an O. Oh, I thought there was an O. Dama. 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 No, G. I took the, the G as an O. Killer. That's 2 percent. 14. You're going to take 20 damage. Ooh. Here's what happens. You attack, you swing, you miss the first time, um, you attack and hit again, and she, she kind of waves her hand at you. And as she points her finger at you, you are surrounded by hellish flames. That ain't right. Uh, hellish rebuke doing oh, 20 damage? It was 40-10. Upcast. Yeah. So that's the third level of hellish rebuke? All right. 
Maybe. Now. Just a little second, the 2d10. The <clears throat> we should get the guy. Uh, should you go. should get the guy. <laughs> One, two, three. I mean, All of you make deck saves. Shit. Mm. Okay. No, you're not inside. This is, is this yes, magic? Yes, this is a fireball. It's, it's, uh, it's, this is magic, it's right? Magic. Mm. magic resistance. Yeah! Dirty 20. Uh, 21. 22. I got my green dice out and I'm doing okay. Dirty 20? 21. Dirty 20. 22. 22. Okay. All right. Well, I guess all of you are just taking half damage. I take no damage, actually. Really? Ooh, I have evasion. evasion. Florian, like, backflips and jumps from, and, like, jumps on top uh, against the wall for a second and slides back down. Uh, 7 and 11 is 18, and 9 is 27. Half of that is 13. I need a proper eraser. <sighs> I still can't be power killed. Okay. Okay. And you know who's up now? Loser. Winifred Bird. I took 13 damage? Yes. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. Raven Feeblement can't help us now. Raven Feeblement can't help us now. Um, does she look any different? No. No? But she's actively casting, like, fire magic and To all be this fair, stuff. you were very perceptive. Yeah. You saw Occam attack her. Yeah. He started the fight. He actually but he I, literally I, drew first blood. But I inside checked that it seemed you off. You did think that something seems off. All right, then. Um, I'm going to cast. You trust more. I trust Occam more, I think. Um, in the long run, I'm going to cast Guardian of Faith. <laughs> um, and a really, I cannot overstate this, really big bird shows up. In the biggest bird. <laughs> the biggest bird! It's um, holy made shit. Made of like this like black light with like these two golden eyes. And it's, um, if you know what Guardian of Faith does, um... It just hits for like a flat 20 damage in yeah, the turn. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a good spell. Um... It looks like a bird. He's the biggest bird. <laughs> he made the biggest bird. <laughs> so yeah, that's my um that's my turn, I think, and I'm gonna back up a little bit. Okay. The famed Bill Allen lip quiver as he reads the play. I am minorly <laughs> intimidated by that. <laughs> um, Alright, Occam, you were up. It squawks. It vibrates. Uh, bonus action. I enter a rage. I have resistance to all damage except for psychic damage. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh. Bro's gonna hit oh, get him with the psychic lance. On me if you want to make any melee attacks, which I don't think you're going to do. Bro's gonna Probably get hit not. with the psychic lance. I might. <gasps> um, and then I'm gonna make two more attacks, both at advantage, because I reckless attack, so you still have advantage on me. Okay. Nat 20. <laughs> Oof. A nat 20. And a 20 to hit. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Those are, those are both hits. What's right. my damage? Cool. <sighs> He's either saying, oh, no, because you're one-shotting his BBG, or we're one-shotting Sibylla. <laughs> the, that's almost a, like, ancient silver I dragon. I don't think she... I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't think Sibylla would cast Hellish Rebuke. 30 magical no. slashing damage. She also said she had no magic left. So. That's true. Yeah. She's actually she casting fire Sibilla magic. Sibylla doesn't lie. Sibylla does not lie. Um, what is that? What is make an insight check. Just you mm. for right now. Oh. What is that? It's a 16. 17. You, when you hit her, like you were like, whoosh, whoosh, the second hit, um, you saw something strange happen. Okay. For just a moment, like her eyes blinked, like in pain, you know, when you're like, ah. And they opened and blinked, they were solid black. And then when they opened again, they were back to her eyes. This is not our mom. <laughs> no way. Okay. I don't know where our mom and is. And now She's it is here. Florian's turn. Uh, uh, I don't I, I I don't know what to do. I don't know what's going on. Um I'm going to go get the I'm uh yeah, I fucking run. <laughs> and where do you go and who do you tell? I'm running straight into the building. Okay. Um 
with my astral arms and astral helmet, and I start uh, yelling. <laughs> three hundred, everyone, three hundred feet can hear me. Ah, uh, Mr. Oracle, you need to come out in front. There's something happening. I, I, it, it's real bad. <laughs> Maybe you want to say that that's not actually Sibylla? <laughs> I don't know. Florian doesn't know. That's the issue. Because he's, he's a little stupid. Uh, and he's just like, he's sprinting like through the halls you of hear the tower. This. You're in the kitchen. You, you hear this echo reverberating throughout the halls. He hears it too and he looks up and he's like, what? Whoa, Sibylla, how? It's not possible. <gasps> I, did, I, know, I didn't, didn't say I Sibilla. didn't say Sibilla. I said oh. something bad was okay. happening outside. Is... You should come there right now. Uh, you know what? Something bad is relevant. Uh, he's like, could you go check on them? Sure. <laughs> and he's, you see him like <laughs> meticulously <laughs> setting things up. <laughs> Top of the order. Not me. Should I roll initiative? Uh, do you go outside? Yeah. Oh, does... No, it, you wait. get to the door. It's a big bird. You leave the kitchen, you get to the door, and you see two of your friends just wailing on, well, actually, <laughs> just him. Is, <laughs> They're just just wailing bird. on Sibylla with the sword. <laughs> and you see, you see Winnie's got, like, this massive bird. That's what you see when you come out the door. Oh, my lord! And, like, she's <laughs> bleeding. Right. Like, you see, like, huge gashes from, like, where he's just carved her up with the sword. Oi! Bring me the orb. Her voice is <laughs> different, and now you have to make a wisdom saving throw. Bring me the orb! Bring me the orb, sinner! I believe! Oh, yeah. I believe! 19. Really? God he damn it. He did it again. How it matters. He rolls. I thought you sucked at wisdom. Occam, oh, I have a plus one. Occam is good in combat. He's terrible. And he, he is a bumbling <laughs> fool everywhere else. It doesn't, it's not even a matter of stats. It's just you roll threes and fours <laughs> outside of combat. I roll 16, 17s, 19s. I feel like a person just failed to get dominated right there. I Maybe. think Mr. Allen's <laughs> very upset about it. Yep. Unfortunate. Yep. Right. Maybe try casting Dominate Cool Guy. <laughs> that happens. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's Winifred's turn. Style. Oh, I really don't think you're Sibylla now. Um, how, does the, how does the bird work again? I'm just looking up, I'm looking at my bird specifics. Um, <laughs> While you were pondering On a turn. No, uh, so, the, on that last turn, make a deck save? Against the birds, what? Uh, against my DC. Um, eighteen. You take ten radiant damage. Ouch. Yes. Um. And then, uh, just to make sure, when he's gonna, oh, shot on my shield. Shit. Um, never mind. I think. I think Winnie's pretty sure that this isn't Sevilla, given the the weird necromancy. I'm gonna use my channel divinity, path to the grave. No, you are. I am. Yeah. Okay. And what does that do? Uh, so the next attack that hits her, she'll be vulnerable to the damage. Well, she. I don't know what this thing is. Um. I see. Yes. So if Aquan were to hit her for eight, it would be sixteen damage. I see. Okay, proceed. Mr. Allen. Yes. Would you argue that uh, a grapple attack could be substituted for one of my extra attacks? It can. I, I would say it can. Rules I would love can. to attempt to grapple Sibylla. You may proceed. Um, you win. Ooh. Oh, awesome. Well, no. I mean, it's most likely you'll win. Yeah. For real. Um, I grab Sibylla, and I'm yes. going to change the grip on my sword so that I am holding it where the blade goes down this way, and I hold Sibylla like this. I'm going to use uh, Lean in Daunting Roar, <laughs> and I'm going to proclaim at the top of this mountain, Ganog, banish this darkness, and I'm going to thrust the spear into Sibylla's throat. Is wow. really funny if it's just Sibylla? No. It's not. Is there a saving throw that she makes it against is. the... Is like Con save. Okay, she makes the con save. That succeeds. It's a DC 15. You 
need to now roll percentile dice. What the fuck? I'm really good at that all of the time, guys. Yeah. Trust me. What, what the fuck? 66. Damn, so close. All right, make your attack roll with advantage because that's the thing. Ooh, 15. Okay. Hit. Yep, damage. Cool. 11 magical. Would this be piercing? Yes. Okay. You you jam it like through her shoulder and she cries out in pain like this. Not Which Sabella. is not something that you feel is normal. <laughs> Um, what? Florian, you're up. All right, so Florian is, I'm imagining he's like by the rooms right now. Yes. He ran around the whole house. Or sort of what, he, what he's been traveling through. He's by where our rooms are. I'm gonna run to Winnie's room. I'm gonna grab this shield Thank you. that was supposedly belonged to Sibylla. You see it there. I run into Occam's room and I jump out the window that's already open. <laughs> you see them. Okay. I jump out the window, slow fall to the ground. Should I yes. be joining the initiative now? Or? Yes. Okay. Toss it to Winnie. Ugh, uh, okay, yeah. It's not Sibylla. Okay. Uh, 15. Beat the shit out of her. Can I put my shield hey, on? Hey, not Sibylla. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm gonna make, um, He's so real. Four attacks, so that's gonna be, uh, 17, uh, and then above a 20. With yes. Two. And those two are gonna be 16 yes. and a nine. Yes. Oh, all those hit. Okay. Anything over the 15 is a hit. So you okay, so the 9 misses. All right. Uh, so that's going to be... Uh, seven. And you are now of a level where all of your attacks count as magical. Right? Yeah, I mean, it's force damage. Uh, but yes. Uh, 14, 23 force damage. Hit a hiss, you said? Man. Like hiss? Um, Would it be? It was a growling way, hiss that wasn't quite human. Factor? No. Okay. <laughs> Just what making sure. What about? are you on no. about? And then. Uh, oh, and by the way, Vermont is not Vermont's on your backpack right now. Brother, Massachusetts. And, and after I make that last attack, I'm gonna like slide the remaining amount of my 55 foot movement speed away with it without provoking opportunity attack because I took mobile. <laughs> Fair enough. Lark. Yes. It, um, it seems, it looks like Sibylla, but it doesn't seem to be acting like Sibylla, and your friends are wailing on whoever this I'm, is. I'm gonna turn around, and I'm gonna go, um, Oracle, you definitely need to come see this. All right. You hear him coming towards the door. <laughs> How is this every bad movie trip in one? You should really see this. <laughs> this is bad. This is bad. <laughs> this isn't good. <laughs> Is she still grappled? Yes. All right, cool. <laughs> Never come I don't think that she. I think that she can still do this despite being grappled. Yeah, just movement is zero. Okay. A dense, a dense, greenish and yellowish fog emits from her mouth. She goes like, and it just shoots out like blinding, stinging your eyes. Stinking. It wow. smells terrible. Oh, is it her turn? Yeah. Dex save. Oh, I see how it is. <laughs> 20 radiant damage. Uh, what's your spell save, DC? Oh, wait, what, what did you add to that? I, so, I know that you roll a 9 there. Uh, she's got a plus 4 to this. You still failed. The DC is um, 20. Huh? 20 radiant? 20 radiant, yeah. <sighs> Hold on. 43, 53, 54, 64, 94, 106. Okay. She, she goes, just this horrid, thick, Choking, eye stinging smoke billows around you guys. Everybody that's within a 20 foot radius is currently in this. Would you say? I backed up my full movement. You backed up. I backed up. You're backed up? I backed up my full movement the first you time. You are in this. Consave? <laughs> well, because you're starting your round next, yes. All right, cool. I believe Con you. save. Uh, 23. Okay, that's good. You made the save, so you're only going to take half damage. Have Let me again, because I have resistance. Do you need a lot of d8s? Yeah. I mean, I can roll fast. Oh, good. Here. You keep that. Two, four. Where's the trophy? Oh, six. That's a lot. 
Eight. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Hmm. 14, 20, 28, 35, 43, 45. In half is 22 poison damage. Halved again is 11. <laughs> 11. Dude. Hmm. Like, how old is that? So I, just be I, laughing. Why just did you just know? The, the face you made was... <laughs> that's, mm. that's what Kat does. Because she's mimicking me, because I'm like, mm, foiled again. That's my turn. These cantankerous kids, yes. Dude, I am cantankerous. Uh, the vapors so. are heavier than air, and just are just, like, filling your nostrils, and you guys can no longer see into the area. I want that to be understood. You cannot see. Mm -hmm. in this area. You know that Occam's in there, you know that she's in there. I will use half of my movement. Yes. Because I'm currently grappling a creature to drag this <laughs> creature out of the cloud. All right, make your grapple roll. I don't oh, have wait. to, I can just do that as my movement. Because he's, he's already grappling. I'm saying she's going to break free. Oh, okay. Well, so you you have a solid chance to defeat her. Uh, that seems like a solid chance this? to me. Yeah, that's... Uh, uh, mm. Is it a 21? Yeah, way above that. Okay. You feel her like twisting and and, and not like strength wise, but like twisting yeah. to try to get out. But you, you got her on lock. So you're pulling her out of the cloud mm -hmm. in essence? Yeah. You do. Uh, your eyes are stinging, you're, you're kind of choking. You, you guys see Occam emerge yeah. okay. with, with Sibylla in a headlock from the cloud. First attack, I would like to take Sibylla and once again attempt to invoke Ganog's power. I thrust my sword into the sky and uh, I go, Ganog, bind this evil. I'm going to slam Sibylla into the rocks as hard Ooh, as I can. Ooh, a rock the, binding. Have you ever heard of the atomic knee drop, Josh? <laughs> so. Roll percentile. Uh, 66 again. Slam away. Damage. So basically, it's like an athletics. You're you're making a, a a shove attack, right? Kind of, yeah, I guess. Okay. What's your strength uh, with the rage bonus? Sixteen uh, is the score plus three, so, and then plus two more damage for the melee attack. So plus five. Yeah. All right. Oh, Slam. I've and then that's an that's an attack. Yeah. So I can make another another attack. Yeah. I see that doesn't work. Uh, I'm just going to attack normally. I'm going to try to... Stab? Stab. Recklessly stabbing. Uh, oh, That is not hit. It's a 10. Astoundingly, it does not hit. Um, Florian. Yeah, I, I, I don't... Does I don't think I appreciate you... Uh, I go before she goes at the top of the order. Yeah. She poison cloud, or uh, whatever that's Wait, called. When, cloud when does Winnie go? I think when he's above me. Yeah, I, I rolled higher than Florian. I thought you did your. I just took twenty damage. No, that was, no, that's that on her turn. On, that happens on the turn. Oh, all right, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Is this cloud following her? Like the the weird cloud? No, no, it's staying in place. Okay, cool. Um, um, uh, uh, oh wait, she should have taken more damage because she would have been vulnerable to one of those hits. Yeah, it would have been eleven more damage. I don't know if you kept it. In. It was the eleven damage I did before. So she went up to twenty-two. So 11 more. Yes. yes. Okay. So you know. Um, I'm going to cast Guiding Bolt, second level. What do I do? Uh, I do. Oh, you do. Um, I'm going to use Lucky. Does a... Shit, there's not. Does a 19 hit? Yeah. Okay, cool. 4d6. Is this radiant pain? 5d6 now. It's second level. It is radiant damage, yeah. Um, that's going to be 15 points of radiant damage. Oof. Then you went, now you're going. I, I don't think I appreciate uh, whatever you are taking the form of my, my friend. So, uh... I think you should leave, and I'm gonna run at her. Um, I'm gonna jump, and I'm gonna make another four attacks. Okay. Two with the astral fist, two with the quarterstaff. Carry on. Quarterstaff ones first. Actually, uh, these, it's gonna be, it's all gonna be astral fist, actually. That's what I've decided. Uh, 16, 19, both those hit. Next two, one miss, one hit. 
Uh, oh wait, uh, so it's just uh, 12, so 17, 19. Uh, 19 force damage and a con save. Let's, say, let's go two con saves actually. Oh. Make. Make. Damn it. <laughs> okay. Lark Othello. Yes. You hear him coming behind you, but it's your turn. What do you Okay. What do you choose to do? Um <clears throat> I will run out how far out are they? Um like, like, about sixty feet away. Okay, I'll dash and get out there. Okay. Mm-hmm. You do. That, that is not You see the poison cloud, but you also saw Akam emerge from it. I can hex, actually. actually throw her to the ground okay, and stab you take her. Spell Sniper? I did. You can hex from 120 feet away. I <laughs> rescind my <statement. laughs> I cast hex. Which, okay, do I have bug in my pocket or no? Because... Sure. Okay, crush bug, bug bonus action, move hex. Where do you put these bug you. corpses, is my question. Are they you still in the bag? To <laughs> toss them out. Mm, chocolate-covered crickets. <laughs> yeah, uh, actually, I think Florian so cool. yeah, eats <laughs> I, I think Florian eats oh, Crispy, yeah. salty, and refreshing. Um, <laughs> All right. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, gonna do that. Hex strength, you guys? Yeah, strength on Always. not Sibylla. Um, and then that's my bonus action, so for my action, I will Eldritch Blast. 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 Remember? That's a, um, a uh, six plus yes, six. I know. Six, no, nine, or a unnatural 20. The unnatural 20 hits. Okay. That's not a Whole lot of force damage. Um, seven points of, of damage. Mm. <laughs> He comes around into the doorway. Actually, this is real. You, you see he like looks out and sees this chaotic scene unfolding. Does he have a gift of alacrity? You, you see <laughs> he looks out and he says, That is not Sibylla! Kill it! Yeah! No! <laughs> we're, we're all like, me and Akam are like standing next to her, just covered in blood. Yeah! <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think we know that. Um, <laughs> although, you don't have her in a headlock anymore, right? No, she's prone. Well, oh, would the attack of, would the grapple have ended? Well, because you shoved her into the yeah. ground and then you stabbed her. If you shove someone, so the she is on. prone, which means she the ranged hot. attacks would have had disadvantage. <sighs> okay, so he's not going to do that. He he just runs out, like he's he runs out. All right, top of the order, it's her. Dex save. God. Oh, did, did, there we go. No, did we move Ten her out? Did we move her out of the Garden of Faith? Uh, it's been moving. It, oh, it moves. Yeah. It moves. Okay. So sure. she'll take 10, right? You should check if it I'm moves. I'm pretty sure it moves. I hope it moves. Makes sense if it does. Yeah. Any creature hostile moves to a space within 10 feet of the Guardian. The Guardian vintage, it, it, The Guardian has like a speed though, I think. Range, like 30 feet. I don't know if she's been moved that much. Well, you moved her yeah, 20, because you moved her out of the You moved her tw the it was a 20 fog. foot radius though, so you moved her to like 20 feet. Yeah, but it's only technically the way they take damage. Mm. Yeah, it's out of the Guardian of Faith. I will move the bird later. <laughs> the bird will sh the bird shall be moved at a later date. The biggest bird. The biggest bird. The largest I'm the corpse. Biggest bird. No I'm one understands. The, under <laughs> the largest I'm corpse. The biggest the bird. I'm the biggest bird. All right. The largest um, avian. I don't think it, uh, then that they take the ten radiant. Be out of the range. All of you make a con. Wait, anybody who's close, which it's is you, and you, make a con save. Is this against magic? Yes. Okay. Oh. Roll with that advantage. Um, 14. 21. No. Yes. Josh, you are going to take thunder, thunder, thunder of nine damage. Nope. 
Thunder, thunder, thunder of four. Okay. Um, and you were not pushed. Well, you are pushed. You're not pushed. You got thunderclapped. Get pushed back. How far? Um, it would just be ten feet. All right. You, you hear, however, that that thunder rings out from this location. Uh oh. Uh oh. It is your turn. It's my turn. Okay. Um, yeah, and I already took that damage, so we're I'm, starting the round. So you, yeah. you were up. I'm ta- I'm gonna cast guiding bolt again because radiant damage seems bad. For Are you hitting an attack? Huh? We didn't hit attack between, did we? No. Or did Torn did you use guiding bolt or no? Oh huh? uh, yeah, I used oh, guiding right, bolt. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, does a 18 hit? Yes. Okay, and I'm casting this at um, second level again. Um, when he pulls out her little heart bow, um, pew, pew. That's a little bit better. Actually, no, it's the same thing. 15, right in damage. 15 is a lot. It is? Yeah. This thing seems to be suffering in pain as it once again screeches in a rather unhumanly sort of way. Occam, you're up. Occam has tried and failed at this point to invoke the power of Gnog. Uh, he's going to do it himself this time. Uh, is the creature moved at all? Uh, in terms of like getting up to attack? Getting up. No. Getting out of prone. It, it is still prone, and it just did the thunderclap on, on you. Um, in the past, Occam was able to generate those kind of balls of dirt. <laughs> you he was going to take his sword, which is in the air, put it into the ground, and see if he can get a ball of stone, arc that over his head, and smash it into the creature. Bonk. Bonk. Make another percentile roll. I, I believe, the eight. That's I believe, bad. Uh, <laughs> Your sword does indeed penetrate the rocky earth, and that is the entirety of your round. <laughs> I have another attack. You did have another attack until your sword penetrated into the ground. Ones. Go ahead. Awesome. <laughs> oh, did you, did you walk into melee and then do that? Yeah. Okay. Um, those like, don't hit. Hold, he's like pulling his sword all the way oh, back. The sword is firmly you stuck in the round right now. Yourself. You yourself. All right, Florian, you're up. Well, I couldn't get this rock off it. <laughs> You are up, Florian. I think you should shut up, and I'm going to hit it four more times. <laughs> uh, both those hit. Oh, no. Let, uh, let one of those Florian hit. commit violence. Oh, no. Uh, ten, uh, con save, and 29 force damage. Ooh. All right, how do you want to do this? <laughs> Florian, he hears this thunderclap. He doesn't like this screeching. He's unhappy with this scenario. Uh, the astral arms just float above him, and as he's like struggling with the creature, they just pummel four times in quick succession and just like smash the head into nothing. Yeah, it's basically, it is just obliterated like pulverized, just meat, bone cracking, skull smashed, just dead, immobile. Um, the sound of the thunder still echoes throughout the mountains. I just wanted to share that with you. Lark, mm -hmm. it's your turn. Cool, I'm gonna turn to the oracle. Yeah, he's right up behind you. He runs up, he's looking at the remnants of, of this person. So what's what now? He says, this is what I was afraid of. Ah. Hmm. It sensed the orb. What if was it, it? If this could, it is a Scotino. What? A what? Give me a second. They Get my are sword out of the rock. Like a demon who can assume the skin of another. Uh, I don't like it. I'm Hamaris not a fan. was cursed as a Scotino. He was the first Scotino. Hama, Hama, Hamas? Oh yeah, that guy. Hamaris was cursed. Oh. That was his curse. Oh. That was the, was the guy you got your sword from? So we need yeah. to send the orb away then? Yes. I fear that if it remains, even though we have now sealed it, 
in in the box if if mm -hmm. it remains here if if this thing came up onto the plateau more will come others other things will come give yeah. it back to us then we can leave you can't Wait, why yeah why is it it will follow if it is contained in the box it may prevent those who would wish to misuse it, sensing it. Nothing came after us when I was using it. Are you certain? I think things yeah. might have. Then how did this thing know to assume the skin of Sibella? I don't know. I'm did it know things? Did it speak to you? Or did it, it simply come here to attack? It spoke stuff. It was yeah. talking. How did it know these things? I don't know. Uh, I mean, Sibella's seen the orb. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. When you should try talking to Sibylla. Oh, yeah. Such evil could not come to Sibylla, as she in the grove is protected as I am here. Oh, there must okay. have been something or someone else who was able to to somehow glean information from you, to somehow assume a guise that would not be detected and know things. <clears throat> Let's think. Like could it? Those who are easily tempted are the most usually used. Orb? Where's Vermont? Where is Vermont? Is he a narc? <laughs> Orb? Wait, where is Vermont? That's bad. Perception check. Where's Vermont? Well, the last time you you guys saw Vermont was last night in the in the uh, tower. Florian does a quick run through the building. Um, where is where where is that bastard? <laughs> where is he? <laughs> Where is you he? you go up to I know where <laughs> Occam's room. Yeah, no he's just, way. He's just like uh, you, just darting in and out. You go of up to Occam's room yeah. and you see Vermont sitting with a platter, like one of the kitchen platters that had like the bacon and ham on it. Oh no! And it's it's literally sitting on his tummy because it's <laughs> oh. so distended from eating the meat. And he's like he's, so he's like drunk with food. And he's okay, like, we're good. <laughs> I I, gra I grab him with the astro ends and jump out the window wow. again. <laughs> and he, he, as he um, as you grab him. All four of his hands grab like the remaining ham and bacon, and he's like, crease is like dripping down his little arms. I, I jump out the window again and land with the rest of the party. Adam, he's fine. Okay. He's doing um, Vermont things. He says there must have been something or someone else, some way there was by which they were able to oh to listen to you or to yeah, interact, there. to know that there was orb the beholder we, to 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 even know what she looked like. Do you control the beholder on the side of the mountain? I do not control it, but it it right. it has respect for okay. the plateau. But it cannot right. come up. Uh, okay, let's 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 think. It cannot what, transgress what, the plateau. What have we thought? What have we seen since we got that? Because there's some weird stuff that happened before, like the bird that was talking. Although we talked to that one bird, oh. but that was before we got the. Order. That was a spell, I thought. Uh, yeah, and it was a bishop. spell, but it was a weird. The, oh, we didn't talk to the bishop. He says, but he gave us the yeah. orb. He says, what did you say? The bishop, maybe there. We didn't talk to the bishop. There was a priestess that talked to us, right? Yeah. yeah. What priestess? Some Triton lady. Did she possess the crown? No. The crown bishop wears a specific crown. It has one of the elemental crystals of water in it. History. Did she have it? No. No, she didn't have that. But she left to talk to him. He was underwater. But I don't think we ever mentioned Sibylla. We didn't mention Sibylla. We never we were, mentioned Sibylla when we were there. The crowned bishop did not grant you these gifts? No. Well, the, some sort of the underling did. We, we assumed that the uh, that this, we were told that this priest the went like under the water, talked to the crown bishop, got the things, and brought them to us. Because when the we crown... We have not seen the bishop. Yeah, we didn't... We don't know who no. they are. So the crowned bishop did not, in fact, give you the orb? No. I, I guess I guess not. We, were, we, we weren't even supposed to take he it. He puts up his hand like this. Oh, Florian hasn't been wearing his work ring. He's had it off. And then for he points to the tower and he starts stepping back. I'll take the ring off and throw it. I take my ring off. Yeah, I'm, it's it's been off. I just take it out of my pocket. This is why the orb's superior. People can't spy on you. Um. He goes inside the tower, and he's like, once he gets inside the tower, the door is open. He's like motioning for you guys to come in. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Dart in there. As you guys go into the tower, he closes the door and he says, I am not certain, but it is my instinct that something or someone else is at play here. Someone who knew to give you these gifts. Someone who knew that by doing so, they would be able to scry upon you and know the truth of who you are, of what your motivations are, and moreover, of who you are aligned with. Yeah, I don't like the ring. It burned my finger once. Why would they want to know that, though? I mean, we're not really doing anything bad. Maybe they knew we were going to go up here? Cause we had we, the we servants had, of Gnog with us. We had a plan. We were the rock I, guys. I, I, yeah, I mean, we had okay. a plan to come up here. Maybe the goal is to get here. We had a plan to come up here before Isn't we got it, the orb. It would be a bad idea to come here, though, because... Unless you're Hamas. Sibylla, the true Sibylla, yeah. knew that you had this orb. Yeah. yeah. She was pretty... She, she would not have sent you here with any ill intent. No. no. She was, Certainly she must have thought that perhaps there was something we could do together. She, she was really scared yeah. by the orb, yeah. Yeah, she did the same thing you did. Fall over. Banner ship, maybe. Exoria! <laughs> Something like that. The, the ritual of banishment cannot work on an object like this. It can... Can it work on someone carrying that? It can be transported, but someone would have to carry it through a portal. Oh. Uh, he says, uh, we, where? Lark and I have been gathering things. I should explain. Come, everyone, please come with me. A portal where? He, he mage hands the books that have the crystals in them and the artifact. I'm going to give you Vermont. <laughs> and he begins walking up the spiral stairs. Oracle. Yes. Where does this portal go? I. The void? I am not certain. No. Oh, not certain. There is no way that it would go to the void. Does it go outside? And even us? if it did, none of you would survive. Yeah. Um, so if it has to be carried through, it just means it has to go through. Why can't we, like, kick it through or something? Does it require living like hands to tie take it? it to a cat or something? I like? think it's you teleport a person and everything they're carrying. It's not you open a door. Ah. You, if it was simply thrown through the portal, imagine it as being similar as tossing it as far as you could into a random place that you could not see. There is great danger in this. Someone, it could literally fall into someone's lap the wrong person's lap. It is not simply a matter of kicking it away to somewhere else, but moreover, taking it somewhere that is not Kaminos and securing it to ensure that no one will ever find it, burying it deep, deep and far away. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, if it is taken out of this box, those similar to the Scotino and countless other evils could sense it and would seek to use it for their own ends. Where's the box right now? He's like has mage handed all of that stuff. So you guys go up the stairs, you get to the top floor Can and you it? see it's a large, big, like basically like an open laboratory. I guess I'd have hand check to grab the box and stuff it in my main. It, it's you understand that it's like a oh okay big I thought yeah. it was like okay no it's like a big <laughs> metal box like like a eight by eight by eight cube. So someone has to carry it through a portal. That's I don't like that. Uh, that's bad. That's very bad. Does it have to be someone or something? Like, can any creature do it? Well, I think so. Uh, I suppose any creature could do it. But we don't want people finding it that shouldn't. That's true. I do not think that your small specter friend has the. <laughs> no, I was thinking like a bird. Strategic intellect bird? necessary to find an appropriate Modern? hiding place for this. Uh, I was just no. Um, I have an idea. Which is? Where's the highest mountain of all the realms? What if it rolls down though? We teleport there. <laughs> the mountains furthest to the north. Not, not but here, but anywhere. Everywhere. He says, I do not know what the tallest peak of Arakazine is anymore. 
the Great Sundering undid most of the western coast. But the central mountain ranges were certainly great in size. But I would not necessarily bring you, such a thing to the mountains, for such is the place of the Scree Cap and the Goot. Could you build oh, it? Good. A mountain. With not the power here. of the earth. Akam, are you planning on going through the portal? Because I, we, uh, you're being, you're being no, way too. I'd come with you. I would just like to say, um, here seems like a good place to keep it. Oh no. Well, no, because you're very powerful, and it's the tallest peak in everywhere. You understand that, encased in this cube. It cannot be detected as it was before, but they know where it is now. And it, Rather in and of itself, it. existing, eliminates the magical protections oh. of this area. Like, the re it, it can't be here, because, you know, there's like the, the 11, the big ones? Right. They can't, if it's not on Kaminos, it can't be used to break those free. I mean, I could take it. I, you know what? I don't really. Have I don't any. think. I don't think one of us goes. I think. All of us go. I think it's one of us or all of us. And I don't like one of us. I don't like. I, well, don't, I don't think we need to think about that before we even decide where it's going. Away, not we on Caminos. We don't know where it's going if we open a portal. I cannot say for certain, my friends. When you will arrive, but I can say for certain that you will not arrive on a Rakazine. When? Where will we go? If we're just moving it somewhere else, in this world, time, whatever, then that's not really helping. It's just moving the problem away from here. Well, yeah. That's, well, that's, that's that's the, the problem is only the here. Problem. Yeah. The problem only ha is a problem if it's here. That's fair. Um, if it's not here, it's not a problem. People um, in the other continent don't want to free everything here, I don't think. No. I mean, not... Do we really have people to leave behind besides each other? I don't know anyone. I know you guys. Yeah, I know you guys. The ritual utilizes and channels the magic of the four elemental crystals. The activation using the orb will open the portal, but only for a short period of time. The portal will close behind you if you take the crystal through the portal with you. And there is no means for me to open a portal again. But this is a much, as much as that may be a sacrifice, this is a much greater choice than the potential of any of the Eleven or of the Scotino to acquire this and to find a way to break the, the barriers and open up Caminos. Yeah, I mean... Sounds like... My know. fate was sealed long ago, friends. I cannot go through the portal. Not in this form. And the portal with these meager crystals would not be large enough to allow me through in my true form. It would perhaps be six feet in diameter at most. Um, well, you know, I'm not an expert, but I think we can go. We can go through the portal, right? Certainly. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean. Akam. <coughs> well, another another choice. Uh, well, we don't. I'm. Um, I, I, I don't know a lot. Um, you know, I'll be the first to say that. Uh, I, I do know that you you know more people here uh, than me. You have more ties to this place. I've just kind of lived in the woods for however long I've been alive. Um, the people that we know were no hero. Oh, we're never going to get that guy's flowers, are we? <laughs> no. Oh no. We'll uh, all go. 
Florian starts. Actually, pick- could we just could you teleport those like flowers back to the fair boy? <laughs> left, like, I mean, seven can we ago? keep one to remember? But what if <laughs> to remember him by? We yes. even spoke to him once. Yeah, it was nice. Please know this, my nice. friends. That if Sibylla trusted you with this, she must have seen in you some greater good or the potential for this. But it is truly a, a huge sacrifice. You go into literally the unknown. Well, I mean... I, I, I want you to understand this, only because you must know that while I and Sibylla do not have a choice, we are guardians, this is our penance, this is why we are here. Uh, you know... You have a choice. You know, Mr. Oracle, uh... Please. You have earned the knowledge of my true name. You may call me Chrysos. Chrysos, okay. Chrysos, I'm not too afraid of the unknown. To me, you know, a lot of things are unknown. I think it's just more adventures, so maybe. Maybe we just, like, end up at the bottom of the ocean or something. I could make us breathe underwater. Yeah. I can hold my breath. Can you? Yeah. You do have one thing that could help. <laughs> you have spoken of mountains, but I would differ by saying this. That blade. Yes. You have made a connection with Ganag, something that should not be possible here in Caminos. But somehow you have done this. Wherever you end up, perhaps that blade will guide you to a place where this could be hidden. If you truly do have the reverence for Ganag, and Ganag hears your call. Okay. I'll draw my sword. The box is made of the same metal, yes? Yes. You're like, oh, hey, look. It's the same metal. Can I run the blade along it? Yes. Does it reverberate? It makes a a strange tuning fork kind of sound. Mm. It fades. Can I focus on that noise and enter a short prayer? Just for simple guidance. Yes. He says, I do not know how much more time we have. Given the loud nature of that thunderclap, there may be more of the Scotino or even worse coming. If I am to begin this ritual, I will now construct the artifact. But you must be prepared. If this is indeed your choice. Do we want to ask Ganog first? I mean... I, I think. I, uh, I mean, like, if you don't want to go, you don't have to. I no, mean, I'm fine with it. Oh, but I just right. think that there's a couple options we might want to explore first. Well, I don't think we have a lot of time to explore options. Yeah. Be responsible. Any Make a percentile roll. Alrighty. Eighty-six. <laughs> I feel like, you know... Winnie? Yeah? Uh, before you go, can you uh, say goodbye to Sibylla for all us? Oh, She yeah. cannot. What? Why not? The sending will not reach here. The barriers. Oh. That all is right. why Okay. I um, cannot speak with Sibylla. Do you want to keep her scale with the go-go, or...? Do you have, like, a bird or a familiar? I can enact agents to deliver messages to the valley, but no further. Okay. I'll stay. Huh? I'm gonna stay. I can help you. You would do this, Lark Othello? Yeah. You You understand that even once the orb is taken through a portal, they will come here looking for it we will have to leave and move to some other less hospitable place. I will find us safety in the mountains, and in time, 
the scotina will move on to other places. Or I can fly you to Ohiro and deliver you. Though I do not know the state of things there. But if you are willing to stay, you have my solemn vow that I will protect you with all the powers that I have. I feel that a great debt is owed to you. You've helped us a lot, I'd say. And I feel like, even if it's just through me, you getting to connect with Sibylla would be incredible for you. I also don't want to leave you all. I don't know what to do. Um. How do we solve this? Ark, I, I think, I think you should do what you want. I know, I, I, I don't want to stay here. I feel like now is, I have, we have a, I have an opportunity to, you know, I don't know, do something. And it's for, I'm, I'm gonna go. I, I want, but I want to stick with my friends, only people I know here. I'm not in charge of anything here, um, but I think I think you should do what makes the most sense to you. If you want to come with Chrysos us. Chrysos looks at all of you and he says, please know that I understand the difficulty of the choice that you must face as both Sibylla and I made it potentially thousands of years ago. But I do believe that if you go together that you will not be separated as we were. Separated from this place and time, perhaps. But together you go through the portal and together you will remain. Of this I feel fairly certain. Okay. But the choice must be made now for it will take me some small degree of time to enact, to build the artifact, and then begin the ritual. Well, I'm going. I'm going. I have to. Gnog calls. Then let us begin. Lark. Are you gonna come? Whatever happens, you have shown great power with magic you choose to come with us or stay here, I believe you will do great things. Lark takes off her boot and throws it up into the air. And symbolizing this die roll. <laughs> I'm coming with oh, I'm very sorry. Alright. Okay. There is nothing All for right. which you should be sorry, Lark of Hello. Your okay. friends and you will remain together. That fellowship will grant you strength in whatever you face. He sets down I have the. One yes. Thing. Um, <coughs> Winnie's going to reach into her bag and she's going to take out the second to last wind chime she has. I haven't been to my mama's grave in a while. If it's by a hero, there's this little hut. If you could maybe just tend to it a little bit, the flowers are probably growing all over it. There's, a, there's some rocks. My minion can move in great <laughs> camouflage. Right. I'll hand it to him. <laughs> you have seen him. Yeah, or, or he can, his he can move in great camouflage. He, he will not be detected, and All I will right. see to it that he delivers these to the grave of your mother. Thank you. Also, um, do you mind if I write a letter to give to Orb? Do as you wish, <laughs> all of you, but know that the commencement shall begin now. He lays out the artifact on the ground, on the stone floor of this room in the tower. Um, you know what? Don't even bother making a roll. You see something. <laughs> Embedded into the stone floor, you see a metal disc. And it looks like it's made of the same metal as his sword and the box. And you see that it has a symbol on it. It's vibranium. <laughs> it has a symbol on it. You don't recognize the symbol. 
but you see this. He sets the, the brass looking artifact down dead center on that. He opens up the first book and he lays out a crystal in one of the outer slots. And then he goes through and systematically lays out each of these things. And he's, you hear him like murmuring, like a quiet chanting in a language that you aren't familiar with. I'm giving him guidance. He lays these things out and then he uses mage hand and he opens up the box. And he pulls out the, using mage hand, he pulls out the orb and puts it in the center. He leaves the lid of the box open and you see it just kind of like hovering. And then he mage hands it over to you, the box. I'll take it. And he's continuing to like focus steadily, you hear him like chanting. And this goes on for about 20 minutes. What do you scribe in your letter? You guys have 20 minutes till the, the portal opens. Um, first, the letter is addressed to the Furbolg no hero. Okay. <laughs> Votano. Votano, the herbalist. Hey man, yes. sorry. We had to go to another dimension it and says, time. <laughs> it says, uh, Votano. <laughs> there is a lady disguised, no, sorry, a silver dragon disguised as a lady in the woods. She's in great love, I think, with a gold dragon at the top of the mountain. We're gone. But <laughs> if you're still up for adventuring, please give this to her. And it's a second letter in the same, presumably, envelope that says, hey, this isn't, oh, what's the oracle's name? Chrysos. Chrysos. This isn't Chrysos, but it's Lark. And I just want you to know that we made it to Chrysos and that I think he still loves you, and this is my best attempt at getting some kind of note out to you. Thanks for your help. Okay. Lark, am I aware that you're writing this letter in general? I think so. I think Florian has an addition. <laughs> okay. <laughs> On a separate slip of paper in like <laughs> Shittily in like terrible handwriting. <laughs> Third grader handwriting. Fucking, we're dropping a bomb on Third Botano. grader handwriting. Sylvan. <laughs> hey, Sibylla. Uh, thanks for everything. I'm gonna treasure this basket for my whole life. Uh, we're doing. We're going someplace else. Some when else. I I. I I, I couldn't think of another way to say bye. Um. I really like your treehouse. I hope you have a great day. And then day is scratched out, and then it says, like, week, and then week scratched out, and it says, like, <laughs> month. I, th I think what he's going to see is happening, go, are, who are you writing to? Sibylla. I'm also oh. stuffing all okay. of the flowers we've collected thus far into the letter. <laughs> it might be packed. <laughs> um, and I don't have any gold, but that is that is what we have. And they're probably wilted by now. Do we, okay, do any of us have any money? I just want to say. <laughs> I, don't know. I have money. I have money. I have none. <laughs> I think Winnie's going to write. Oh, and then. Just thank you for the scale. This is a big letter. Thank We're going to like. I'm going to buy this with some cloth or something because there's no is way it's fitting in a letter. Like. Uh, like ink. Yeah, there's ink, there's quills. <laughs> oh, <God>. um, <laughs> all right, that dries. In my, uh, you bundle it all up in like a burlap sack, yeah. basically. Um, I have a journal that I've written down, like notes and drawings of our travels, and I'm putting that in it as well. Hmm. She's just like you for real. <laughs> okay. You hear a humming, a strange kind of otherworldly humming. And you see that the artifact now is, it's still like on the floor and all the crystals are in there, but you notice that the color from each elemental crystal is now going slowly, like as if it was made of matter, but it's clearly light and it's moving slowly towards the orb in the middle. You see the orb, the black orb in the middle, like the smoky motion is like not chaotic anymore. You see it swirling in the same direction. Okay, real quick, order of which we're going in the portal, Akam, Lark, Winnie, me. Um, um, I was gonna grab- Akam. So yeah, you hold the box. Uh, I was, 
Uh, I was yeah, because I was gonna grab the the orb from a distance with my hand. Well, it's gotta be in the box, though, right? Yeah, the box yeah. from a distance with my. Yeah, uh, so you will box. Yeah, I, I got the box, and then you first, because if. Maybe like, I should go first because I'm the smallest. I can like go in while it's well, opening. But, like, um, Why don't we just go? I don't well, know. It's not Where open are yet. you? Yeah, let's just, let's just all run it really fast. Okay. <laughs> and you see this thing now spinning like crazy fast. All of the four elemental lights finally make contact with the black orb. And there's a bright, blinding flash. Are we blinded? And when your eyes open up, you see above, just floating in the air, a six foot tall circle. And it's got energy crackling like lightning energy and fire energy around it. And you actually <laughs> smell like wind through this and you see like an, an image. You're in, like you, you see literally just some open prairie. Looks like it goes oh, on for like it. as far as you can see. And, and he looks up and he says, remember, and he's like concentrating. He says, remember, when you pass through, put the orb into the box and seal it. Hide it well. Follow the word of Ganag. He All says, right. go. Come on, Lark. <laughs> Let's go. Grab the orb. Run it. <laughs> so you guys run through first. Yeah. It, it is like literally taking a step. Like, you're like, boop. You look back and you see them. You see inside of the tower. But you are now outside in some other place. The air smells fresh and clean. You're just in rolling meadows and prairie for as far as you could see in any direction. Florian is, uh, over the last 20 minutes in the conversation beforehand, he's been picking all the flowers out of his hair and okay. off his belt and off his braid. And it's in a, bo it's in a bouquet now. And for the <laughs> first time, Florian is flowerless. And he no. says, uh, Chrysos, thanks, thanks, thank you for everything. And he's gonna put it on the ground, like outside of the ritual circle, and boom, bounce into the portal. I Please. will step in as well, taking the orb and the box. Okay, you have the box, you reach through, you grab the orb, you put the orb in the box. And I step through. And you step through. Make me a percentile die before you step through. I, I am I'm being ready to like pull Akam in. Ninety. <laughs> Alright. You step through. The orb is in the box. You you I appear. Close it. The four of you are in this prairie. You close it and literally as you close it, you guys look through one last time and you see Chrysos and he's like and he looks up. And he sees you see like relief on his face. And he holds up his hand like this, and then, and the portal closes. You in the 360 degrees, just prairie. You're in the middle of nowhere. Shove the top down and just try to close it. Okay. Make a percentile roll. Six, 46. You close it, and it seals like it did before with him. You can hear it like cooking, king, king, like, <laughs> but, but it's in there. It's a rock. There are no, no seams, no hinges, anything. Okay. We did it. You see the yeah. sun <laughs> directly overhead. Florian. It seems like the weather is not all that different from Caminos. Like it's it's like mid seventies, like a nice warm. Summer day, the wind blows through the prairie. You see, like tall grass kind of blow. There's little wildflowers everywhere. I think Florian just like looks straight up and just like yells out into the valley, just like a, a cry of, uh, I think, jubilancy is a great way to put it. Mirthfulness. Mirthfulness. As you start, do. He starts frolicking. You, you feel a bit of relief. <laughs> <laughs> Where? What direction do you go? He I'm spins around in a circle draw and my blade goes the direction wherever he stops. You do? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, make me a deck save. <laughs> What's going on? It's, it's like... Uh, 15. <laughs> it's like a giant... Okay, so dune you go, ha, huh, and, and you stop. You almost fell down a pit. Oh. 
you look and you you see uh, like basically like a cave. It looks like maybe it's dug out and like goes down, deep down. It's kind of covered up by a bunch of grass. I'm gonna take the box. I'm gonna take the box. I'll draw my sword and I'll kind of ring it again. Different sound. You feel a vibration and it, like the sword pulls down. You got an earth. We, there's yep, a hole. A hole over there's here. Mm -hmm. Okay, Florian's gonna slide down. Okay. Hmm. Are you all going down? I will tumble down. Uh, real quick before Winnie goes down, she's just gonna like. She has like guidance and mending and druid craft and all these cantrips. She's just gonna try to cast one. Does anything feel different? No. Huh. All right. She's gonna go down, I guess. Okay. You guys go down about sixty feet before this thing finally kind of hits a bottom, and you you kind of tumble out, and there's like sort of it looks like an old kind of cave, like naturally formed cave. But you hear running water, like up ahead down the cave. You all have dark vision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wait, no, Can we don't. Wait, we don't. We don't. We don't have dark vision. We don't have dark vision. Oh. I do. I Wait. can't. Okay. Sure, you can, but yeah, it's dark. I think I do. But you see about yeah. fifty feet up. Yeah, yeah. You see a subterranean, looks like a subterranean river, like just kind of I slowly still moving. Could I still see a mile clearly? Yeah. Okay, yeah uh, oh wait, no. Uh, uh, magic one. helmet. Oh. I have darkness. <laughs> Wait. Okay, you walk up. No. It looks like basically you you're still? you're at this point where no. the cave ends. There's just enough clear like you kinda have to duck into this little cavern. You see this river cutting across. Like if you walked up this way, there's like a river, underground river that's cutting across. Cold, fresh water. And you have dark vision and super sight. Mm -hmm. You look and it goes down like 200 feet underwater. Like as if this maybe was some kind of chasm that backfilled with water. You could drop it down there. Bottom of the bottom of the under, underground water ravine? I don't think many people would go looking. I thought we were gonna hold on to it. What's the sword We're supposed sense? to hide it. I mean, yeah. What's Mr. Ganog say about it? Then? What's the sword feel? Make another one more percentile roll. I wonder if the birds are different here. You know. Sixty-eight. I didn't think about that. Oh. The sword still seems to be pulling down. If I move like how I'm holding the box to the other side of my body, does that change at all? Yeah. It does. Like, you're like, it doesn't turn you, but you feel like a pull almost. Does that metal lead to that metal? Hold this. <laughs> Hold what? The box yeah, or the sword? The box. Okay, take the box. Take five steps back. Does it change orientation? No. No? Uh, in fact, you feel a pull. To the sword? No. To like the river, to like to down. This entire like game. not like huh, where you have to make a strength save, but like like mage hand level of pull, where it's just like a little like magnetic. Maybe let's it. not put it there. No, wait. is it the metal pulling or is it the rock? I, I, the the, uh, the little orb. I think it's both. I don't know. If it's shake a, it. Go, 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 go. This entire campaign has just been people like it goes to one corner, the, the corner that's time. closest to the river. It, it wants the ball, not the box, wants to go in the river. I think then we probably shouldn't let it. I think that's pretty fair. It is the box or that the box wants to go down? My sword is still it's the orb. The orb's in one corner right now. Oh wait, so it doesn't pull the does it, does it still pull the sword? Yeah, but. It, do you, what potions were you given long, long ago? Potions of water breathing, but we drank both of them. them. Mm. Fire resist. Winnie, I Winnie, use Winnie is water, you have water breathing as a spell, oh. right? Um, you, you, you get it, against like the it's a spell. Is it just all yeah. magic yeah. things? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Does it still pull? Walk. It does. Not it water does. breathing. Can I go to the river, like where it's like leading? 
Oh, yeah. I'm What's in the river? Water. Can I like look through it? Cold water, like underground water. You you can look for as long as you can see down with dark vision. It's the river is only like ten feet wide. This chasm, but it goes down like two hundred feet. Hmm. I'm gonna oh. sit down. Okay. I will cast detect magic as a ritual. Okay. Is this sort of magical? Or is there something pulling from below the river that might be affecting our stuff? There's nothing magical in your area. I'm gonna run a your sword doesn't detect as magical. Your the box doesn't detect as magical, and whatever's in the box doesn't detect as magical. Mr. Allen. Yes. I'm gonna run back up to the surface. Okay. Is there any animals about? Sure. Squirrels, mice, field mice. I'm gonna grab a field bees. mouse. <laughs> oh, okay. No. Butterflies. All right, you grab a field mouse. Speak with animals. Okay. Hey, pal. Uh, I don't really know where I am. What's like? Do you know what's down there? I'm just gonna point to the big hole. Worms. <laughs> oh, worms are down there. Anything like dangerous? I don't know. Is there a fish in the river? I don't know if there are fish in underground rivers. I'll say yeah. that there are some, some not fish, a crab. but like, yeah. <laughs> a crustacean Some of kind something. of crustacean. Mm, yes. I will let the field mouse, mouse go and say, have a nice day, and I'll put it in the grass. It, it, it's like, thank you, and it starts walking away, and then a hawk swoops down. <laughs> <and> it <takes laughs> no! <it. laughs> no! <laughs> um, this brutal, uncaring world. <laughs> do I do I jump at the hawk? Yes. No, you don't. All right. Okay. So what do you guys want to do? Can I cast beast sense? Yes. On the crab. Yes. Can I go down? Yes. Just gotta start casting there. more spells. It goes all the way down. All the way down. At the very bottom <laughs> is um, not rock, but rather more water, but the water is dense, and the crab can't. It can walk on it. The water's dense, so dense that it can walk on it. A sealed space of some kind. I can see. It, 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 does it look yeah, visually it's different? Like, yeah, it's almost like ground. You know, like it, it can, you can feel that it's walking on this dense layer of heavy water. Winnie, if you uh, if you make us breathe underwater, one of us can go down there. I don't think I can make you breathe underwater. You I can't. I can make you walk on water. Oh, okay. I don't. I don't have water. Breathing. To be oh, clear, if you box, if you dropped that box, mm -hmm. it's heavy. It would sink. How heavy is the water flow? Um, Good. not super fast. Not like a raging river. It's kind of a slow moving. If you wanted cold, fresh water, I could put the box in stone forever. Down there in the water. I mean, that's I could a good idea. Swim down there. And then that's I, 200 feet. Not all the way. I could put it in the wall, maybe. I think all the way might be the best idea. What way? Or just drop it in. Drop it in. I could put it's it being in. pulled there. Do we want it to go where it's being pulled? Oh, I want to go where I want to go. Gnog swords pulling it, maybe. It's, but if the. I'm worried that I there's think, something I don't like... Think the, I don't think the orb's getting pulled. For what it's worth, box you don't see any metal, other living creatures down orb. there. I went to one, one of the crab. corners when I was holding the it. The crab that you sent down <laughs> there. Like, there's oh. nothing down there. Can I end beast sense and look down? Is the crab, like, getting crushed? Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, scientifically, it, maybe it would yeah. be, but I'm going to say that it's a crab that lives in this Does it environment. Does it just go back up? Yeah, it's like a slow going back up, you know. Oh, for the love of God. Um, I think we just drop it down. I'm going to cast, gonna cast a daylight. Okay. At the bottom. Okay. It is supremely bright down there. Just so we can see what's going on. Okay. You can clearly see that the bottom of the river, the floor of the river, is just a dense, super dense layer of something that is liquid. It'd it sink. Throw it down. All right. <laughs> <I'm gonna> just <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Toss it. What's the range of Melden to stone? Like, do you have to be holding oh, no. it to Melden? Oh no, stone shape. Stone shape. Can you still like stone shape when it's down there? No. no. This one down. The crab's going up. <laughs> the box <laughs> goes down. A few moments later. Certainly, we can do some some sort of shenanigan with. with and it kind of settles into the the heavy liquid. Mm -hmm. um, 
like if you put something heavy onto like play-doh you know what i mean like it kind of like mm -hmm. like kind of sinks into it and it's there well we cave in the cave we never come back here and we do How whatever wide is we the want river? like six feet oh six feet it's it's this is clearly something that was like a chasm like an earthquake created or something a, a tear in the in the rock and then backfilled with water and over time looks like some kind of subterranean river like in a cave in the cave all right yeah i have an idea as well what's your idea it's gonna we're sort of like walking a rock right this is yeah. like mud oh yeah um Akumo straddle the river. Don't, Don't say, say it that. like that. But it's the right word. He's going to grab both walls. <laughs> Do and he's going to start praying to Ganag to see if he can close this ancient evil away. What's he doing? Okay. Turn. I don't Make know a percentile roll. Why is he like standing I believe. like the, 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 the Da Vinci man? 15. The Vitruvian man? Yeah. The earth starts to shake. Like... <laughs> A lot. I don't know what did you do? You I'm here, bad things are gonna happen. I'm leaving. I'm uh, going. Rocks Flying. start falling. You guys are running out. We're going. It, <laughs> it's, out. it's backfilling. Yeah. You hear rock, like huge chunks of earth crashing. You guys go back up the tunnel, and it's like the moment you get out, it's like <laughs> there's a slight dip in the earth above. Great. Uh, I, I did it. Got a great job. Works. You're a, you're a priest now. As <laughs> as the sound, you know, of of the falling rock sort of settles. You hear the wind blowing through the tall grasses. You see birds, butterflies, bees buzzing around. Wildflowers in the prairie. Well, now which way? That was cool, I guess. I was going to cast Thunderstep. I'm sorry. <laughs> East. <laughs> East? That's west. West. Let's go this way. This way. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah. West? Yeah. Do me a favor and make me a percentile roll. Oh, all right. I don't get to make a lot of these. That's going to be a 70. It's daytime. The sun is directly overhead. But when you pointed to the west, you noticed in the sky, like way, way, way far away, just the ever so smallest flicker of purple light in the sky. Religion. <laughs> Can I roll it? You could roll it, but you'd really have no idea what that is. Sort of I'm cool. But maybe you'll find out. And maybe we'll all find out. Ah! <laughs> Because that's a really good time to conclude this very lengthy episode of D&D with High School oh. Students, Season 5. And everybody, I also have to say that it's been an amazing season. I hope you all enjoyed uh, this cast of incredibly talented role players. And uh, maybe you'll see them again on a future episode of something. But this concludes Season 5 of D&D with High School Students. So thank you, as always for your continued support, for liking and subscribing. I'm going to miss these guys. I know. <laughs> Maybe you'll see them around afterwards. We'll, Maybe. We'll, we'll find right. out. Maybe we'll meet the forest hands friends the another Hands day. in the middle, everybody. All right. Happy birthday! Oh, wait, the, the, the handshake, the handshake. Yeah. Oh. There we go. <laughs> there we go. The four prongs strike. Well done, well done. <laughs> All right, thanks, people. Peace out. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Well, hello, and welcome to Bill Allen World. I am Wizzy, the wizard. I'm back once again to remind you to subscribe and click on the notifications button and also watch videos that are over there. Tune in to the next episode of whatever show you are just watching and watch other shows featuring Bill. He made me say that because he's a narcissist. Okay, bye.